The sum and difference identities for cosine can help us find cosine values of angles that we may not be already familiar with. If we're looking for cosine of a sum of two angles, so here the input would be a plus b, and this would be the input for the cosine function. If we want to find the cosine of that sum, the identity or the value of that angle, that sum, can be found by taking cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle, subtracting sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. For a difference, so if I'm subtracting two angles on the inside as the input for my cosine function, that can be found by cosine A times cosine B, so cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle, plus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Notice that for cosine, if I am subtracting on the input, then I am adding on the outside of the identity. So if I am adding here, then I am subtracting here. So we think about OS for cosine as being opposite opposite sine. So how we will use these will be we will start thinking about angles that we already know, angles that we are very familiar with. And the identities can work with degrees or radians, so either way. But we're going to take two angles that we are very familiar with and either add them or subtract them, and then we will be able to find a cosine value of an angle that we are not familiar with. So for example, if we wish to find the sum of two angles that we are familiar with, so let's say 30 and 45 degrees. So let's take 30 plus 45 degrees, and we get 75 degrees. We can then find the cosine value of 75 degrees. So we are familiar with 30 degrees and 45 degrees, but we are not familiar with the values for 75 degrees. But our identity can help us find that cosine value. So cosine of 75 degrees, if you were asked to find that, then you could always think about it as the input being 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. So we break it up into any two angles that add up or subtract to give you 75. Now that we have 30 and 45 degrees, we can use our identity. It's cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. Opposite sign, so minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2 times cosine of 45 degrees would be square root of 2 divided by 2 minus sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half, times sine of 45 degrees, which is the square root of 2 divided by 2. So we're going to multiply according to order of operations. We must do multiplication before we can do subtraction. So we multiply across the first two fractions, multiply across the second two fractions, and then we can convert, combine them into one fraction. So square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4, they have the same denominator, so we'll keep the same denominator, and we'll combine the numerators on top of that same denominator. So cosine of 75 degrees would be equal to the exact value of square root of 6 minus square root of 2 divided by 4. All right, now we want to work with the cosine uh, of a difference. And let's take any two angles that we're familiar with. So let's say, for example, I'm familiar with the values for 135. And let's subtract from that 30 degrees. So we can actually then find the cosine value of 105 degrees. So if I'm looking to find the cosine value of 105 degrees, then we can break it up into any two angles that either add or subtract to give 105 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and use 135 and 30 since that's what we started with. And cosine of 135 times cosine of 30, so we're just using our difference formula for cosine, 
uh, an opposite sign, so plus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So cosine of 135, that's in quadrant two, that's our 45 degree angle family. So that's negative square root of two over two times cosine of 30 would be square root of three over two plus sine of 45, sine is positive in quadrant two, so that would be square root of two over two times 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees would be one half. So we multiply across the two fractions, very, very similar to what we just did for the sum. Multiply across the two fractions and then combine, whoops, combine into the same denominator. So they both should have a denominator of four. When we multiply across, we should get a denominator of four. And then once we have that common denominator, we keep the same denominator and then combine the numerators on top. So the cosine value of 105 degrees, which we were not familiar with, we actually can use that difference identity for cosine to actually find the exact value by using angles that we are already familiar with. So we want to find the exact value of cosine of 195 degrees without using a calculator. And we're not familiar with 195 degrees, but we are familiar with angles that might add or subtract to give 195 degrees. So let's break this up into two angles that we're familiar with. So let's change the input, instead of writing it as 195 degrees, let's think about it as 135 degrees plus 60 degrees. Those are two angles that we are familiar with the sine and cosine values. Now that we have it split up into two familiar angles, let's use our cosine identity for a sum. So that would be cosine of 135 times cosine of 60. Opposite sine, so minus sine of 135 sine of 60. So cosine of 135 will be negative square root of 2 over 2 times cosine of 60, which is 1 half, minus sine of 135, square root of 2 over 2, times sine of 60, which is square root of 3 over 2. Multiply across the two fractions. Now that they have the same denominator, we can keep the same denominator and combine the two numerators across. So the cosine value of 195 degrees would be negative square root of 2 minus square root of 6, all of that divided by 4. We want to find the exact value of cosine of negative pi divided by 12. Now this particular input angle is given to us in radians, but negative pi over 12 in radians Radian values and degree values, when we're talking about the same angle, they have the same cosine value. So it doesn't matter if we're working in degrees or radians. Um, we can find the cosine value of this angle either working in degrees or radians. The cosine value will be the same. So let's just go ahead and convert to degrees, since degrees are a little bit easier to work with. And we want to think about our quick quick conversion. We, we talked about that, that pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. So we can do that quick little replacement. So what we can actually then work with is cosine of negative 15 degrees. 12 goes into 18 15 times. So working in, working in degrees is a little bit easier than working with that fraction in radians. So convert to degrees, so we want to find cosine of negative 15 degrees. So we want to think about any two angles that add or subtract to give negative 15 degrees. So let's work with, what about uh, 45 degrees and 60? So 45 degrees minus 60 degrees. And it doesn't matter which two angles you use, any two angles that either add or subtract to give you negative 15 degrees. So I'm going to choose 45 and 60, and I'm going to subtract in between them. So we're going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to cosine of 45 degrees times cosine of 60 degrees. 
opposite sign, so we're going to add sine of 45 degrees times sine of 60 degrees. So cosine value of 45 would be square root of 2 over 2 times cosine of 60, which is 1 half, plus sine of 45 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2, times sine of 60, which is square root of 3 over 2. Multiply across the two fractions, we get square root of 2 over 4, plus square root of 6 over 4. Once again, we have the same denominator. We will keep the same denominator and combine the two numerators on top of that same denominator. So the cosine value of negative 15 degrees or negative pi over 12 degrees, if we were talking about radians, all the same. That value would be square root of 2 plus square root of 6, all of that divided by 4. We can also work with the identity in the opposite way. If I give you the right side of the identity, we can actually simplify this to be either a sum or a difference of two angles inside the input for a cosine function. So for example, if I have cosine of 173 degrees, so here's the first angle, we'll call that angle A, times cosine of 128 degrees, let's call that angle B, plus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Since we're subtracting, or since we're adding here, we are subtracting on the inside of the cosine function. So it's going to be cosine of angle A minus cosine of angle B. So cosine of angle A is 173 minus 128 So that would be cosine of 45 degrees. And we know that the cosine of 45 degrees will be square root of 2 divided by 2. So we can also use the cosine identity in the other direction if we have the pattern for the right side of that identity, then we can go and convert that to the left side. So we can write that as the two angles inside, back inside of the input for cosine being subtracted. So we can use that difference of those two angles and actually simplify uh, cosine of 45 degrees. And so this whole entire expression actually simplifies to be something pretty easy. Just cosine of 45 degrees, which we know would be square root of 2 divided by 2. So we want to find cosine of pi over 18 times cosine of pi over 9 minus sine of pi over 18 times sine of pi over 9. So we can see that here we, are, we see the familiar pattern for the right side of the identity for cosine and since we're subtracting in between we know that we will be adding on the inside of the cosine function. And here our angles are given to us in radians. Let's go ahead and convert to degrees. Degrees are a little bit easier to work with in this context. So we're going to convert from pi to 180. So that would be pi divided by 18, 180 divided by 18. So that gives us 10 degrees. 180 degrees divided by 9, that gives 20 degrees. So we have our first angle is 10 degrees and our second angle is 20 degrees. So we can convert this to degrees and then add the two angles inside of the cosine function. So this would be equal to the same thing as cosine of 30 degrees. And we know that the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 divided by 2. So this complicated looking expression can be converted to degrees and then converted to the identity of, for that sum of those two angles. And then as soon as we do that, we get something that we're very familiar with and we can find the answer for cosine of 30 degrees. So square root of 3 over 2 would be the simplified version of this entire complicated looking expression.